Hello, good evening, London, good evening, uh, Wales, and good afternoon in California. Uh, this evening, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are in whichever part of the planet you are, we are pleased to present to you the amazing Dr. Chris Perry from Wales. Ah, yes, Dr. Chris Perry is from Wales and is a leading light of greatness. Leading light of greatness, what does that mean? Uh, these are the people we at Greatness University that yeah, we recognized yeah. to be the lights. You can think about, actually, if you look at where Chris Perry is, he's a person in the middle. You can see darkness all over, but you can see the face shining through. You can see the light shining through. So yes, that is what yes. leading this is all about. Yeah. Leading yeah. us to the truth, leading us to the light. I can give you more light if you want. <laughs> leading us where we are able to see and manifest our greatness. So, Dr. Chris Perry, you're welcome to Great Lives, and it's going to be a great evening with you and Thank hearing you. from you, sharing your story. And... Uh, drawing strength from your greatness. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us this evening. But for that, let's turn over to Dr. Uh, to Sir Clyde Rivers. Uh, Sir Clyde Rivers is the world's greatest civility spokesperson. He is the godfather of civility. So he is here as well tonight to co-host co this yeah. show and lead us to where we need to be tonight. Thank you, yes. Dr. Basenge, Professor of Greatness University, first of all, I really wanna thank you for your concept of stepping out of the box. And because in the world, people need to understand that, what greatness is. Yes. And you know what? And you couldn't have a better guest than Dr. Chris Perry. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is one of the most wise men that hears from God, gets inspiration from God. When, when, when you leave this, this show, after hearing Dr. Perry, you will believe that God has, <laughs> there, there's so much God has, and he'll bring it to you. Because the one thing about Dr. Perry is things are attracted to him. Man, his stories, you, you understand when he shares some of his stories, God attracts things to him, and he is one of the most wise, genius minds of God that I know. Dr. Perry, good to have you on, on, on this amazing show. Thank you, Sir Clyde. Yes. So, Dr. Chris, I'm sure you've done lots of things, and you've been all things to all people hmm. in different circumstances. So I'd like you to briefly introduce yourself to our viewers. There's some things they know about you, but if you could tell us briefly what you do and why you do what you do. Okay, I think that um, we're all unique. We all have a unique background. Uh, and, and for me, uh, I say to my friends, I was manufactured in India, born in Wales. Uh, I went to boarding school in South Africa. So I used to have a very strong South African accent. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> found I had friends in different parts of the world because if you have a heart of love for people, then why not enjoy and recognize and appreciate people from different countries? And I've done that since a little lad. I remember in South Africa when uh, a little boy uh, who was my golf caddy uh, he wanted my bike and I gave him my bike. But my next door neighbor was very angry during the time of the apartheid. And uh, I just said, he's my friend and he's having my bike. And he did. <laughs> so that's always been a heart for me. So with people that followed on, um, with involved IT, you know, the, the days guys when we had typewriters, two fingers, bandit, you know, internet, <laughs> no email. I, I'm of an age, you know, you're younger than me, guys. So, you know, but you can imagine what it was like. So, um, so for me, getting into the IT industry training, and I've trained people right across the country and the world, 
and then became a diplomat and trained uh, British ambassadors and all that stuff uh, for a number of years. What a privilege and honor, you know, from Rwanda to Cambodia. And, uh, and then just followed on running my own business. Uh, and then, you know, you can do something that seems small, despite not the day of small beginnings. Um, all I did was doing some photocopying and selling stationery in a little tiny place. But you know what? I met a, a, a man called Karim who said to me one day, Chris, he said, could you write a CV or resume for uh, a chap who turned out to be um, going for a job as one of the heads of um, tourism in the Middle East? Direct results met another lady the next thing she says oh darling i understand you write cvs darling i know a company darling in surrey darling but interested in you darling long story short that human collection resulted in me joining one of the top companies in europe and i became their top consultant in the world by success 96 percent worldwide you know from judge to barristers and solicitors to people in the oil and gas industry in Port Harcourt, uh, just all, all over the world. Because when you love people, you'll come into the gift of who mm. you are. So that's a little bit of me. And um, then, of course, I, I met Ambassador Clyde Rivers, a friend of mine in America. And we landed up outside the Houses of Parliament sharing coffee and cake. <laughs> in the Methodist Central Hall, and I've become yes. with them ever since. And now I've got to know you guys. So all, all in all, lots of downloads. And, um, but I'll say this one thing about in 2012, I was asking the Lord, really, reading the book of Proverbs about wisdom. And I said, Lord, I really want wisdom. And when I looked at the scriptures, I realized that Jesus had relationship with people. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a doctrine, it wasn't a form of uh, mm. following rules, but relationship. Yes. And, and when I realized that um, the Apostle Paul, Peter and John, for example, the things that they really knew about Jesus was that Jesus was their Lord and that God was their Father. Mm -hmm. And that helped me... Um, through a miracle of events, but uh, I managed to find a version of the Bible, the American Standard early version that was copyright free, guys. And this one man, through a, a friend of mine, he downloaded the entire scriptures to me in Word. And I had the freedom to, he gave me a tip and all the numbers, imagine having to take out every number in the world. Yes. Uh, in the word and wow. uh, the next thing i reformatted it in terms of relationship and it transformed my life and transformed the lives of other people so that's a quick summary of me i'm a bit of a mixture um i still love people i still love you guys you're great fun <laughs> and um you know it's really an honor to be part of uh, both i change nations uh, and also greatness university to each play our part. Yeah. So you've got three for the price of one today. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for the amazing introduction. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, in case you've just joined us, we are with the amazing Dr. Chris Perry, live from Wales. And I really wish he, that you do share this message to someone who would really, uh, you think, it would be helpful. So make sure you share this message, share this video yes. to the people around you. But at the same time, if you have any questions, put them into the comment box. Why? Because Chris, Ch Chris Perry will change your life tonight. But yes, Dr. Chris, the first thing when I read your biography, mm. you hinted slightly about that story in India. But yeah. it seems that your life would have not been. There's something that happened at the very beginning of your, even before you came into this, into this world, this, this planet. Could you get back to that story in that plane and with your mom before you were born? Yes, because um, uh, there was my mom put on the plane called the Comet. So yes. with any innovation, there's also... Um, there's the potential of failure and success. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, in that particular case, uh, you know, great invention of, uh, you know, international travel. But what happened was the windows were too big in the planes. And they, they actually found out eventually that there were rivets that should have been screwed in to the fuselage, not tapped in. At mm -hmm. a certain height, they blew out and the windows disappeared and the people were killed. Wow. So when I was on that plane with my mum, the only thing that saved us was my mum had TB. Mm -hmm. And the captain heard about it and said, I don't want to take responsibility for this child and mother. And they literally stopped the flight, took the baggage off, and obviously... Um, and then if you search YouTube and you put in Comet Crash Calcutta, you'll hear the original um, film of that event and uh, saved my life. And my mother was, um, didn't, wasn't told for six months because she was in hospital in, in Wales and I lived with my aunt. So that started my, uh, my life. And I'm still here kicking still. Uh, yes, Dr. Rivas. Yeah, Chris, Chris, you have a way with your, your, when, as, as, as we met across from the, the parliament in, 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 uh, in England. Yeah. You have one of the most unique ways of, of, of like talking about God. It's almost like, like you're a man professor, but you're down to earth. You're this, you have all this knowledge. And I, I, I want to tell the world why we honored you with an honorary yeah. doctor so yeah. they understand why. Uh, we, we, we um, at, at our graduate college and seminary, we have honored 15 presidents and, and, and first aides around the world. Mm. And this is, is for people that have added to existing knowledge. Sure. Because uh, our system isn't based on research. It's based on those that are getting new ideas. Sure. Because my philosophy is this. How come the one that, that got the idea first, that paid the price, is not a doctor, but the one that actually researched him is? Yes. So, mm -hmm. so your mind is so brilliant. And I just want the, the world to understand. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's something about you. Your mind's brilliant. But you also, as we were sitting in that cafe, you, man, relate to everyone. I mean, he has... Dr. Patrick, he has a man unique gifting that everyone is like drawn to him. Chris, mm -hmm. how did that take? What? How? How does it happen? Everywhere, I'm. I'm like the guy's here. He's here. They're coming to him. He's this. He's this. And 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 by the time he left, everyone knew him, and he was waving bye to everyone that left. It's a, re it's a relationship gift. It's. I don't talk to me about that. Well, what I, dis what I discovered was that um, I wanted relationship with God. And when you, now I put it in terms of our paradigm, but, you know, what you call the golden rule is when you focus in being an encouragement and help of others, you can relate more. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're helping a, a person across uh, across the road um, you know I've had people hold my hand and I'll take them across or I'll see an event when uh, kids are looking up at their mum or dad you know and there's big smile and I'm walking past and going yay you know um, because of that there's no judgment there's mm. celebration uh, there's no jealousy there's no envy it's not whether someone's got a bigger car or, or got a title or anything i say wow you're in that position you know when i dealt with ambassadors i was celebrating the the wisdom that they must have to deal with sometimes very difficult situations mm. or <laughs> representing their country and people would listen on every word but on an on another hand i'll be sitting um, in a coffee shop, and uh, I'm looking around to say, who who can I have fun, fun with, mm. you know? Um, and 
I don't know, I, th I suppose it's being open-hearted, you know, depending on our background and experience. Um, people's hearts are quite close sometimes and very yeah. perhaps inward looking. So for me, um, and if you looked at my network, uh, as you suggested, uh, it really is across the world. Uh, friends of mine, uh, you'll know John and Amy, um, they went, yeah. this is amazing, they went to a wedding in Canada and they're filming this and I'm watching it and suddenly that wedding were people that I actually knew in Canada. And they suddenly realized, we both know Chris. How do we know Chris? <laughs> and I'm in Wales. <laughs> it was so funny. I thought, I thought, yes, Lord, this is okay. <laughs> Uh, Chris, if you don't mind me ask, uh, Patrick, may I ask, uh, Dr. Perry, how did you start to like train ambassadors? How did that, how did that come about? Um, well, that was uh, again through relationship. Um, it was just a connection. And the next thing I had an in London, and, um, I, they didn't tell us what it was. It was more like a freelance contract. So I did a presentation. And the next thing, they said, uh, we're gonna, going to invest, investigate you for three months with the foreign office. I thought, heaven help me. What are they <laughs> going to find out about me, you know? Uh, I don't know. And then they said, um, well, you've been selected. So uh, I thought I'd better watch a TV series on ambassadors, because I didn't know at that time what an ambassador was. And, um, you know, then I, I, they flew me out to um, um, El Salvador, and I landed up um, having a military guard um, to get to the embassy. And I thought, hmm. But you know, if you, uh, and I'll say this, and it's a real honor to do that for the British ambassadors around the world. And I made some great friends. And um, I think when you can respect people of different nations and backgrounds and positions and all I was doing was trying to serve them with my gifting um, mm -hmm. but through that they always did a part party for me at the end and they all said thank you and I think they put requests in can they keep me uh, but I was on I was on you know a mission so yeah um, but that's that's what happened and um, so there is a certain way you identify a gift yes because the one of the words that keeps coming through your uh, conversation is gifting yes and there are lots of people out there who are not aware of what they are gifted in yes. and i think that's why you came up with this uh, the arc paradigm mm. awareness recognition and connection Yes. So could you walk us through that arc paradigm and see we how we too can identify our gifts? Because it all comes down to gifting that you're gifted in that area. Yes. And then yes. you can help other people at a higher level who are not gifted in that area so that they too can uh, discover their gift. So yes. just introduced to us what the arc paradigm is all about and how it can help us <clears throat> identify our gifts and be aware of our gifts. Okay, what, what I would say is first and foremost, God knows when he put us on this earth to be a gift, not, not only to our family, but to our friends and our community, nation and world. And I think the Lord showed me clearly that it's celebration, not comparison. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, so as I became aware of the gifts, for example, of um, Ambassador Clyde uh, and yourself, that you're great people, but you're also very compassionate. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to that. But you've mm -hmm. done that to individuals as well as to, because despise not the day of small beginnings. So for me, um, when the Lord showed me that awareness was, um, when you think God is light and mm -hmm. I've taken lots of photographs of flowers recently and trees and things is that if it was dark we wouldn't see 
mm. we wouldn't see what's around us. Yes. That's really good. So when we when we connect with the light of the world, why shouldn't we celebrate mm. what his creation is? His creation. So are we. Mm. So, so the, the three parts of it. First, I discovered awareness is that wherever I went, I wasn't responsible to know everybody. Mm. But if somebody became aware of me and I aware of them, we'd start to build some form of relationship. Yes. Friendship um, could be that we're on the same project and therefore I would become aware of their gifts and calling. Like if we didn't have the people that helped us with the internet, I know nothing about algorithms, but I really appreciate the algorithms because mm. we wouldn't have what we've got. You know, RGB, red, green, and blue, but, you know, we need not Einstein or somebody to explain it that we have TV that we didn't have 100 years ago. So I became really aware that, uh, aware of the giftings that I had, but also an ability with another part of my life when I started writing CVs and resumes for people, I became aware, acutely aware of somebody from Zimbabwe had a gift that could be in a particular industry. It didn't matter that I knew nothing about it. You know, if you're dealing with a doctor or a nurse, don't put me anywhere near a knife or anything that will cause pain, right? So then I discovered that in the process, some people would recognize me. So I wasn't putting myself forward to have such an amazing uh, all expenses paid, guys, for two years around the world, wow. business and first class, you know, military guards, you know, ambassador cars. It got a little yeah. bit hairy when they wanted to blow up the ambassador's car and you're in it. <laughs> uh, you know, that isn't quite so cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice at the beach in Barbados, but not those sort of things. So I recognized that there was awareness had um, a part to play in my walk not only with God, but the, the giftings that I became aware right, of, yeah. whether golf or, or cricket or rugby or IT, love all that, love Apple, all this stuff. And then people began to recognize me in my particular gifting that gave me opportunities to study, uh, to work and bring that gift to the fore. So we start small, you know, from greens, you know, sort of... Um, a typewriter suit to know I talk to it and it types it out for me, it was great. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be yourself. So I wasn't expecting <clears throat> everybody to be aware of me. I wasn't really expecting good. everybody to recognize me. Um, the beauty of that is you find that you're, uh, you're in a place where you're not jealous and you're not envious. You just accept for who you are. And wow. I've, had, I've had the ability and the privilege of celebrating a lot of people. Um, so whether it's um, a mother or a grandmother, whether it's um, um, a person who's had a real rough life, being adopted, you know, um, and I, I thank God for every of those people that I've been introduced to. And then the final aspect of the ARC paradigm which works is um, I discovered that you see, if you're in the old paradigm, you expect particularly to do with COVID um, and the threat of different jobs around the world in industries mm -hmm. is you can think, oh, my life's over. You know, what's going to happen with hospitality? What's going to happen with airlines? Whatever. But you see, in life, we all have blind spots and companies and industries have blind spots. Uh, mm. I was talking with a friend about, about Kodak. See, with Kodak, they didn't see the threat of other companies coming in. Mm -hmm. So we can all have blind spots. But if we have a little bit of light, and you have a bit of light, and you have a little bit of light, we can actually help each other to go post-COVID and give the wisdom that God gives us to help people, you know, surf in the new direction. And um, I think there's opportunities and winners in that but the young people that are growing up in their 
levels of education and background, um, I want to say to you that you're valuable in 2020. Yes. And by uh. 2030, um, you won't have nothing, but you're, you're, you're made for this time and season. Right. And uh, there we are, guys. That's a little bit of the way I think, and I still think, hey, you know, I'm, I'm 66 now, right? Se what? No, not 70 yet. No, I'll, I'll be 67 on the last day of August. Uh, I'm so excited because if, like each of you, as I get to know you, Professor Patrick, and you, you, you Sir Clyde, I think if we can bring our combined wisdom, knowledge, and experience to give a hope and a future to our young people, and even people who've lost their jobs and stuff, sometimes I've been a divine connection to help somebody gain a new career because when I've seen their resume, it looks very poor. Uh, and I say, but that's okay. They don't have my years of experience. Mm -hmm. And then I say, hey, let's, let's do this. Let's find out what you've done. Mm. And then they feel afterwards, oh, wow, <laughs> I, I can make it too. So there we are. That's, that's a little bit about me and my background and how I'm trying to bring the art paradigm across the world and saying, yeah. if I can produce, uh, which I'm aiming to um, launch the new book, The Art Paradigm, at um, the August event, uh, yes. Greatness, I want to bring that to the surface there. I'm also setting up um, a podcast and a YouTube channel. Uh, one of them is going to be called uh, Arc Paradigm Interviews. And wow. uh, you're one of the Brilliant. two I definitely want to wow. uh, oh, thank use you. that thank as you. a facility and then um, set up a range of training courses where um, we can actually help people to be aware of their part in 2020 and the future to make the contribution, whether it's to one person uh, maybe it's to encourage a teacher. Maybe it's a teacher encouraging a child. Maybe it's a mother saying whatever the mother says to a little baby that they understand. All they do is go goo 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 and smile like mad. Uh, sometimes cry when they need to go to the toilet. That's one of the things we all have to go through, guys. Uh, and um, we all play our part. So that's the aim in the future. And if I can bring my experience to... Um, whether it's uh, with Professor Jared, who's who's on here too. Um, yes, great you know, man. Great man, and I know you're you're good mates as well, and um, and that's what we're doing, is that we're just playing our part, and uh, you know it's a great honor to me to be bring friends of mine like um, uh, Michelle Francesca. What an incredible poet, a miracle story. Just to say that my yes, friend yes. was just. Uh, um, I was on Facebook. I've never ever been introduced to a girl via Facebook Live, but it came across my Facebook saying, um, Ben David. Well, I, I mentor a boy, Ben David from Germany, uh, but it was Ben David from Bristol interviewing Michelle. And that's how I got to know her. So, great lady. Great lady. So, and I suppose that's how I feel about yourselves like I discovered with her, with her poetry and the things she'd done and self-sacrifice and service out of love, is um, it's a great honor, isn't it, to meet people who've made a difference in people's lives. And uh, if I can be part of helping you two to do that, then uh, it's a great privilege and honor for me to do that. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Uh, Chris Perry. Uh, Dr. Chris, one of the things that you really said intrigued my mind, and I've been thinking about it as you talk, and mm -hmm. it's just at the moment scrolling through the show, you are made for this season. Yes. So that presupposes there are different seasons in life, but as well it presupposes the other seasons to come, the past, present season, and the future season. True, true. So what you are suggesting here is that we're placed in time, or this moment in time, this is our moment, this is yes, our time is. to make a significant contribution wow. in, in the world. And if we don't do that, then we are letting down 
the one who made us. Exactly. Is that what you mean? Well, Dr. Clay Drivers, you love seasons as well. You can explain to us about this in terms of living in the season, living in the moment, because some of us might be sleeping. Actually, the other day I was watching uh, one of uh, uh, Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s uh, speeches, reminding awake in the midst of a revolution. Yeah. So there might be people sleeping through this season. They are not awake. So by the time they are awake, they've missed out something very important. They've missed COVID. They've missed the coronavirus. They are not yeah. aware. But there are people who are remaining awake in the season, in this season, and making the best out of this season. Yeah, if you don't mind me, uh, Patrick, what, what happens is some people, the, the actual virus, in my opinion, is giving sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. because many things that, that people have been blind to, this virus is opening their eyes to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like the, the actual freedoms and liberty we have to go do things. Yeah. Done. Uh, and, 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 and also there's a major component that, that, that I, that I feel that has taken place in this season. We're, we're now seeing the value of one person. Mm -hmm. One individual gets sick. The whole world can be shut down now. Yeah. So what this does, it creates a whole nother conversation. This creates yes. a whole nother conversation because mm -hmm. now I am my brother's keeper, whether whether we like it or not now. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. so this 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 is is just it's a season, uh, Dr. Perry, where 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 so many so many as tragic as things are, there's also uh, there's also a total transformation, Dr. Patrick, of the way people are viewing mankind. Yes. And mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on, on, on that, Dr. Perry? Um, I think you're absolutely right. Um, when, I, when I talk with people from different parts of the world, they're actually very concerned about the people in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it put them into... Um, both an individual and a global view and personal responsibility, you know, from something as simple as washing your hands to um, social distancing. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes uh, two meters doesn't make much sense to me. I was very glad when they said six feet. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I thought, all right, <laughs> how do I go out with my hands out, you know, to, uh, to work out? And... Um, but um, I think one of the big issues that's come up um, through this is um, how much we actually need each other um, mm. to be, uh, I know, thank God for all the internet and everything else, but people actually do want to go out for meals. They do want to hug each other. They do, they do want to have that engagement personally. And um, so I think there's been a, a real shift. I'm going to give one example of a, a lovely man, 100 years of age. He's brought over 40 million pounds in, and with, you know, with his little walker, uh, the Queen is going to uh, honour him. Um, he's going to be Sir, uh, and um, he's already been upgraded to to Colonel, Colonel Tom, Sir Tom oh, yeah. is going to be, and um, you know, it's great to see the the, the children. Um, or the family relate to him and say, we're really proud of our granddad. Mm -hmm. And he's actually one person that's inspired many. And I think there's definite paradigm shift that says it's a common threat across the world. And mm -hmm. um, I'm feeling more a part of the global community, mm. but we actually need the people in the globe to play their part, mm. whichever that part is. I mean, I'm celebrating truck drivers, and if I see an ambulance, I'm going like this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or um, the, all the drawings. Are you seeing all the all the drawings? We love the NHS. Certainly in in the UK, I just go past. If there are any children, they put up these posters. Normally, they're hidden in the house, and they're 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 coming out onto the street. So I think. As, as much a threat it is, it's created, um, you know, God so loved the world. 
Uh, it's not just one person it is, but um, that's put more in me to do more for the one and the yeah. globe through people like yourselves who have a global um, influence. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris, for clarifying that. Because I'm thinking about coming back to the season that we're living in. There are lots of things that you've done for our season. There are lots of things that you've done to bless this season and give this to light as a leading light of greatness. Mm. And one of those things is uh, the uncluttered Bible. What led you to writing the Bible from the beginning to the end? And they being the first Bible on Apple, on iBooks, and cluttered Bible on iBooks. How, what kind of drive did you have to lead you to do that, such a thing? Well, for me, when I first started reading the Bible, it was very complicated. Mm -hmm. and, but when I had the insight, it was relational, not information. Mm -hmm. And that I am as a result of the relationships I have had with people both ways. I thought, well, uh, mm. did, for example, Saul or Paul um, study? Yes, he did. He did study the scriptures, but he didn't know the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, so when he mm. did, it shifted. Um, one of my favorite books is the book of Ephesians. Uh, and in that, I looked at it and I thought, what was the advice that he was giving? He was actually giving it to that city. And he was interested about the family and uh, whether you were an employer or any employee, for example. Uh, he was actually giving practical wisdom from God who gave him the light to understand the moment I tapped into that, I thought, um, I'd read some things that you see chapters and headings. Um, when we're writing a book, we have a reason behind it. But actually, mm -hmm. when, it was, when these things were spoken, it was to real people who were re re uh, living real lives and they faced real situations. Yeah. So that shifted in me to, was there any way, I had never seen anything like it, a Bible that didn't have chapters and headings, and it all came to one verse in Romans 12, verse 1. I therefore beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Uh, and I went, hmm, why is there a therefore, a chapter 12, verse 1? And that one thing just caught my imagination to say, what about um, doing that without numbers and headings? Mm -hmm. And then I found it, there was conversations, there was engagement. And then divine timing, I came across this version of the Bible. It was copyright free. And when I spoke to the gentleman who was American, and he was at that time based in Hawaii, and I had a chat with him, and he um, sent me all the files. And with my IT skill, wow. I was able to, took me nine months, and um, I was able to do that. And I just wanted to transfer to people that if you could relate to the people in it, we relate to people like um, Esther and the story of the beautiful girl who became the king's queen. You know, that's a love story. The girls like that, don't they? Um, and <laughs> You think, you know, um, so this whole issue made it relatable. And mm -hmm. uh, so I was able to do that. And, and Apple, of course, they couldn't believe it. And in the main Apple store, they still remember me as the, because I put, uh, I, I, I honored them for um, one of their specialist guys who helped me. And it was a coincidence of new software they brought out called iBooks Author that enabled interactivity to be done. And they brought it out really to create an educational for, forum of interactivity, where you could add video, you could add uh, music and things like this. So um, anyway, I worked it out with this guy, used my IT skill. And the next thing, they agreed to it. I yes. mean, 
in Apple headquarters, they had to read the scriptures. They had to check it was out. Wow. And um, wow. I, was actually, I was actually going to launch it at um, Dr. Lance Walnow's event um, in Dallas, Texas. And um, can you believe, because it was so brand new and so innovative, that um, there was something in the, in the documentation that said something about American tax laws or something. And um, they hadn't given the green light for it. So although it was there for me to see, it couldn't go anywhere across the world. Um, but be that as it may, um, what I'm aiming to do is, is um, to create a PDF of it so that it will be available on any platform anywhere in the world. And um, I think I was talking to uh, Ambassador Rivers about inviting different people and I'd like yourselves to be involved where you can read some of those scriptures. And uh, we right. could even do one on the Proverbs, for example, and we could give that away on, on Facebook right across the world. Wow. wow. So apart from that, although I'm supposed to be a pensioner now, I, I just take my street cred from Moses, who started at 80. So I, I'm still in my um, diapers, eh? <laughs> That's the story. That's how it happened. Wow. That's beautiful. So we are sitting with a man on this short night who has read the Bible from the beginning to the end, but not just read it, but as well edited it from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, yeah. word by word, removing all the chapter, all the verses, uh, the numbers, and making it easier for everyone to read. That is a very, very big achievement because the first Avon airport has never had never happened for you. Uh, that is very powerful. And is that how you develop your spiritual awareness? Because when I talk to you, for example, mm. it's like talking to the Pope or to Mother Teresa. It's like talking to those higher people who have <laughs> the highest <laughs> sense of spiritual awareness. <laughs> I feel in the presence of that spiritual greatness. Yeah. Well, it's been a great privilege to do that. And when I've been able to, to share it, um, and the sequence of it. Um, you know, a friend of mine had a, a vision when she saw uh, the commendation from the father in a, in a vision that he was pleased with what I'd, what I'd done. Um, but, you know, at heart of hearts, if you, if you know somebody, you want to share about that person. You know, it's a privilege and honor to meet, for you, Professor Patrick, your family, you know, I just, I, I love your dear lady and the children. They're such great fun, you know. They, you know, I love the way you're bringing them up um, to ce celebrate themselves. And I think when you when you know a friend, you know somebody who's shared something like, like for example, with Michelle, when I bought a book on poetry and was involved with uh, the book that she's just recently published. Um, when you know the person or the author of what, what's been written, mm -hmm. it does something you, it creates an engagement. You're not just giving yeah. advice or saying, read that book. You know, this, this hand here, it's a small lad. My dad told me, um, held the hand of Gary Player, one of the most famous golfers of years ago. Oh, in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to, down to a handicap of four, but I think Gary helped. He gave me a little bit of inspiration, you know. It's, um, there's something that happens when something happens in your heart and you want to communicate it to your friends and family. And um, that's, um, so yes, I, I'd be interested to see how many people came to know the Lord through the reading of the Uncluttered Bible. Wow. That's a great concept, the uncluttered Bible. I mean, that just think of the 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 actual sound of that. Yeah. I mean, the uncluttered Bible. That that's yeah. a that's a brilliant name. In other words, in other words, let's get back to the basics. Let's read what it says. Yes. I love it, Doctor Perry. It's fantastic. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thanks so much, Doctor Perry, for using God uh, for letting God use your life. 
for the good of humanity because not many people come to that level and not many people come to that awareness that their life is to be lived uh, for the glory of God. Because one of the things is that if you make something, you expect it to be successful. Yeah. So I think that's the expectation God has of us, that when God has created us, he expects us to be successful. So if we don't work towards that, then we're letting, in a way, we're letting God down because we're not being, we're not imaging the maker. We're not working according to what yeah. we are created yeah. to be. Exactly. So what are the kind of advice can you give to those people who haven't discovered their gifting? Uh, what kind of advice you can give to those people who feel that actually uh, there's nothing in life for them, especially with this storm we're going through, this the coronavirus mm. storm. Actually, I remember, the, I remember that leads me to, uh, uh, to when we are going to Wells, and uh, mm -hmm. just after leaving Cardiff, you were in the car with us, weren't you? Just after yes. leaving Cardiff, between Cardiff and Port Talbot, there was yes. a massive oh, yes. storm. I couldn't <laughs> see the road. They had to stop in the middle of the road. We're driving at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> all of a sudden, they had to come to a standstill to make sense of what's happening. So this is what really is happening to us at this moment in time. The world has been hit by coronavirus storm. Ah. We don't know where to look. We, we are Go completely disorientated. So what kind of message can he give us? Mm. That once the storm has settled down, then we can mm. continue driving forward because that's exactly what we did. We had to <laughs> wait in the road in the middle of the motorway. Once the storm dense had gone, well, then by the time we realized that it was all fine, all of a sudden there's a heap <laughs> of ice in the road. And then how to <laughs> get through the ice. So how can we not get through this storm of coronavirus? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, what I would say is that um, if we weren't who we are, um, you know, when you think of the lives of, of people who went through the First World War, Second World War, uh, or are in conflicts today in our world, yes. right? Um, sometimes we can think that... Um, we've had it easy in comparison. And I can't mm -hmm. imagine um, when I was in Rwanda and I talked to people who'd been, you know, killed in the genocide as one young guy I was talking to, uh, you know, I couldn't imagine the suffering. So um, I certainly in regard to people who've lost their lives through the coronavirus, my heart goes out to them. And I think when they're not able to see their family in the most dire of situations, and I think anything that we can do, staying at home, social distancing, all that, it's part that we as a community need to do. But in terms of uh, the future with people, if it, you ask my advice, I would say, although you're in it, and people that were in the war were in it, they actually helped each other and there was a tremendous community spirit mm -hmm. and um, a lot of innovation came out of the world wars and i think yeah. a lot of innovation um, and i think we're going to celebrate innovation at, at a new level mm -hmm. yes it's going to make you know you need purchasers and sellers mm -hmm. uh, people who are eating and people who are making it. I'm good at eating it, but can't really cook it much. So if you guys come and have a meal with me, it might be ba it might be baked beans and toast. <laughs> a jacket potato, I can do that with tuna. <laughs> yes, Lord. So what I would say is, if you're alive today, whatever your age, you have a part to play. Yeah. Whether it's celebrating a nurse or a doctor, Yes. or a teacher or a student you know even teachers are saying oh it's nice to see my students it's not all online yeah yes mm -hmm. i think if we have that sense of hope for the future and we can actually individually celebrate the people in our proximity whether it's personally or online we are encouraging the next generation 
to believe that there'll be new industries. Who would have believed we'd have had mobile phones or cell phones or, you know, at one point, uh, I think my parents had a, a black and white telly, uh, you know, yeah. not color, not mm -hmm. digital, not AI. You know, if I yeah. said to my dad about that, um, but yes. at one point we didn't we didn't have a plane to fly, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. we couldn't go anywhere. So I just believe that the gift things that's in us is because we're alive today. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So um, that's my hope in the future. Um, you know, you'll hear the story of my my my, my dear friend uh, Dr. Missy Johnson from uh, from the USA. You know, here was a lady driving with her son down whatever you call the roads in the USA. And she, um, in a car crash, has, uh, her son comes out okay. She has about a 5% chance of living. Uh, you know, uh, triple level breast cancer, um, facing, you know, a very uncertain future. But she's come right through the other end, um, inspiring women to tell their stories of getting through the yes. tough journey. And um, uh, you're going to meet her because she's going to come to the event. And actually, she's online. She's yeah. a real shift. Uh, she was talking about yeah. the shift earlier on when we were talking about the But again, in our life, the way you're describing, there's always a shift. Shifting from one season to another, shifting from one level to another. And that exactly. is very, very uh, important because if people don't make those shifts, then they do not live their greatness they can't ex they can't experience what god has in plan for them yes it, it, it's exactly to do with um kodak mm -hmm. it's a great company but they they had a blind spot about new innovation mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the world in a sense has had a blind spot that we actually need each other That's really and good. that we need to protect our borders yeah. not because of political or some other reason, but actually, you know, I can't go into my city and say, I love Indian food, but I've got to have Indian people in there. Mm -hmm. I've got to have Italian people to make the beautiful ice cream that we've got. And, um, you know, recently there's been a lot about people coming from Europe because we're missing these people suddenly. They can't do the things in the farms and mm -hmm. other jobs that they do. You know, um, you need the chief executives, you need the innovators, you need your Einsteins and you need your political leaders, but you also need party supporters, you need your billionaires and millionaires, but you need the people who serve their gift. Absolutely. Uh, I love the people who make coffee. Uh, yeah. You know. Even though it cost me quite a lot of money, I spent quite a lot of my money in coffee shops. But the friends I've gained, um, you know, it's it's worth the money. So I hope that's been helpful to you guys and to the people who listen to what we talked about today. Oh, yes, very, very helpful. And actually, Dr. Khaled River has a good way of saying it. There are 7.8 billion people. Yeah. 7.8 billion solutions, yes, Dr. River. Exactly. exactly. And, 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 you know, one of the things that, that I think is so important is my whole message is this. Everyone God created is valuable. Yes, and, absolutely. And, 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 and see, part of the issue in the world, when catastrophes happen, different, different people are actually marginalized and not considered humans. Yes. We can never, ever in the world ever again let any group of people not be considered human ever mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. ever, 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 because everyone that God made is just as valuable to him. Yes. Because, what, see, see, I tell people, God looks at the world different than us. Yeah. We look at actual class status. God looks at his design in people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and if we can help people find their design, they're going to solve problems that the world's never thought. I, yes. I, I always say this, Dr. Perry and uh, uh, Dr. Basinga, I always say this. We have no clue of what the world would look like if everyone was operating on 100% of their God gift. Yes, yes. Uh, 
this is what my aim and my goal for us to make sure. Can, can, can you imagine if the world functioned where the giftings that God gave everyone had the ability to come and solve problems? Oh. Mm-hmm. What would the world look like if everyone operated at 100% capacity, at 100% potential? We'd have a great yeah. result and a great world we'd, to live in. We'd have a great result. And, and this is what I look at. I mean, I mean working in, in the platforms I work in, I look at all the problems that aren't solved in the world. Yeah. And I said, who has that solution? Mm-hmm. Like, 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 imagine this. Can, can you imagine if a person born 50 years ago was God put in that person a gift to solve this virus, but they were killed in human trafficking. Yeah, yeah, true. And now we have this pandemic. What happens if the one that was called to act stop this from happening died early? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is why we must value every Individual. single life in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Yes. And uh, that leads me to more or less to the end of this show. But before we leave you, Dr. Chris, Perry, one of the things you did found is called the Strategy for One Consultancy. Yeah. So what is it all about and how can it help us to design our greatness? Well, Strategy for One was basically that uh, each individual has a strategy within them. Uh, mm-hmm. It's actually come out in the art paradigm because um, it's your own personal awareness. Um, mm-hmm. to see a problem and provide the solution, mm-hmm. as Dr. Clyde mentioned. So that uh, in, in my arena, when I became aware that lots of people weren't getting jobs because they just didn't have the gift that I had, as an example, to be able to just simply reformat. Um, I couldn't do the things that they did. So when I gained understanding that the strategy for one is for the one person. Uh, It gave me a level of respect for the people to say, hey, you can can do this, you've got this skill, you've got this background. But they didn't have the skill in English to be able, and the Lord just gave me a little idea, which was, um, as you gentlemen would know, if you're, when you've ever interviewed people for for jobs or places within your organizations, Mm -hmm. um, when you get hundreds, you want to bring it down to a small number. And the main yes. thing is to get the impact in the first few sentences. So when I realized that to give a quick summary profile and what the young person, whatever age was interested in, and then I just did a list of uh, key highlights of what they've done, but give a little better background to say they were a leader in school or something like that. I had no idea that I had I have a 96% success record of anybody wow. I've ever written for in the world. Wow. And at least it, it's, I've, I put a lower figure of 45 million, but it's probably a lot more than that because the, the advice that I've given them, the strategy for one is, is what's best for you? Mm-hmm. What's the best industry for you? And so... Mm-hmm. What I can do and help people and some of the courses I've got already to to launch and you know want to put them within um, uh, Greatness University as well is where people can gain from the wisdom and experience of the past mm. that says if you do that, and yes, I have the track record like you gentlemen have your track record in your field and that's why we say we're happy to be involved and be part of what you're doing is um, we just recognize each other's gifts. And uh, that for me has helped many, many people. Uh, I'll give one final testimonial if I may. Oh, yes. Uh, this lady was crying on the phone to me. Um, it was when I was working for another company as a freelancer. And she was crying because um, she'd lost her job, being made redundant. The social services were taking her three children away and she was losing her home. And she'd scraped the money to get together for my advice. Imagine the pressure. And um, I cried with her, really. And um, 
she wrote to the company th three weeks later or so and said, please tell Chris, I can't thank him enough. I've got another job. I can keep my children. I can keep my house. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, Jesus. what more can I say, you know? Yeah, yeah. So strategy for one is simply uh, respecting the individual gifts of the people, but using the mm. gifts that, that I have to, to translate it into their industry to be a solution in the 21st century. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris, for the amazing uh, advice, the amazing story, but as well, you being able to use your life as a light, a leading light in your community, in Wales, in England, uh, globally, all over the world. You've been in different sure. countries. You've created lots of things for us that we will and who continue to treasure your greatness and legacy. So, just your final words before you leave to our viewers, and then I'll ask the same from Dr. Sir Clyde Rivers. Sir Clyde? No, Chris, uh, because you said you did, did you say Chris first? Yes, Chris, oh, yeah, you say Chris? Yes, um, yes. I'd say at the end of the day, um, I love the fact that I'm alive today to know you guys and to be part of the the answer or the solution to the world's problems. Mm. And, uh, you know, I don't mind if I'm uh, helping somebody who's tiny and celebrating them, uh, or like your, like your children, for example, um, or in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Um, I think if you just be yourself, then you will be the solution for the problems that you become aware of and that you can recognize when you have that gifting to use that for the blessing of uh, humanity at home and abroad. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Rivers. Now, what I say is your God design is customized and everybody that can set with the audience of one God he can download your program for the rest yes. of your life and you will walk in absolute victory in everything. So people spend time with God and he will customize your life design and spell it out for you. Hey. Hi, powerful. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Chris uh, Perry. Thank you very much, uh, Clyde Rivers, for being with us. Uh, this God evening, okay, so I'm going to say bye to our viewers, and importantly, in case uh, you've just joined us or you don't, you want to know more about uh, uh, Dr. Chris Perry, his story is in this book, the World Book of Greatness. So you can reach out to me or find it up on Amazon, whichever platform, and you'll be able to read the amazing story that has created the greatness that we've shared tonight. It's been Dr. Patrick of Singer live from Greatness TV. Thank you so much.